Who gave you the nickname first? Uh, I, I was, I joined, when I went in the military, and I'm in boot camp, and the Hispanic guy says, you know what the name uh, uh, Carl's means in English? I said, yeah, it's Charles. He says, yeah, and the nickname for Charles is Chuck, and I'm gonna call you Chuck. And for some reason, it stuck with me, and from that point on, everyone called me Chuck, so I just stuck with it. <laughs> it worked well for you. Yeah, it did. And of course, these are all my books that I've written over the years. I've done two trips to Iraq, 2006 and 2007. So I went over there and, and I uh, went to 17 different bases and camps and shook hands and took pictures with 20,000 troops in 2006. And then I went over and did it again in 2007. Are you really popular among the military guys? <sighs> oh my gosh, one guy, they said, hey, show, uh, one of the troopers had a jumpsuit on. He said, they said show Chuck, show Chuck pulls down his arm, he's got a picture of me on his arm. I go, guy, that's on there for the rest of your life. <laughs> but they had my name on tanks and wow. you know carriers and all this stuff here. Are you, are you surprised when you understand the scope of your popularity? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling, mind really. Were you in the Army? Uh, uh, Air Force. Air Force. Yeah, my brother, who this is my brother's dress uniform. He was killed in Vietnam. I'm sorry. And so we have his dress uniform, and and he was one of my black belts too. This is his black belt certificate, and he was on my fighting team. I think people know. Most people know. Obviously, you you aren't an an actor who dabbles in martial arts. Mm -hmm. You are a true martial artist. Yeah, that dabbles in acting, really. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, this is when I won the turtle title right here. That's Luis Delgado, and I'm going down to mm -hmm. punch him in the head. This photo came out. Louis says, comes up and says, it must have been your mother down there in the audience taking that picture. I said, I don't know who took him, Louis. Got it. This here is uh, missing in action, mm -hmm. and I'm rescuing POWs. And uh, so the scene is for me to get the POWs into this helicopter out over the ocean. Well, of course, I have a stuntman to do that, but it, the w wind was blowing so hard that they said, no, it's too dangerous. So what we will do is lift you up out of the water about three feet and then drop you back down, cut. I said, okay. So anyway, the, the POWs go in the helicopter. I grab a hold of there and, and the pilot takes off and takes off with me out of the ocean. And I'm, all I'm, and I'm hanging, no safety or anything. I'm just hanging on. So anyway, I'm flying out over the ocean and I'm looking down about 300 feet up. And I said, if I drop, would it kill me, you know? And finally, uh, my brother, who was, who was on the set, calls and they finally get a hold of the pilot and they bring me back to the beach and drop me down. I am held so tight that they had to peel my fingers off. The, oh the my thing. goodness. So I've had some pretty fun experiences. How did you first hear that you were getting sort of this resurgence with the Chuck Norris facts? About 11 years ago, a college kid from Brown University sent me three Chuck Norris facts. And I'm reading them, and the first one was they wanted to put Chuck Norris on Mount Rushmore, but the granite wasn't tough enough for his beard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, this is pretty funny. Well, the college crowd started gravitating to him and started making up their own Chuck Norris facts. Then it went to the high schools and the elementary schools, and, and then it just started going all worldwide. Did you ever want to be in law enforcement? Yes, I did. Actually, that was my goal. And, uh, you know, I grew up planning on being in law enforcement. So when I joined the military, I got in the military police with the purpose of preparing myself for law enforcement. In fact, when I got out of the service, uh, I was married and uh, I, had to, you know, I had to start working right away. And so I took my exams for the LAPD, and, but I had like a four month waiting list. So in the meantime, I'm working at Northrop Aircraft and, and I decided to start a little karate club in my mom's backyard. And I started teaching, and in and, and about three months, I, I fell in love with teaching. And I decided to make that my career. And uh, so I changed my mind the last minute, and that's history. Wow. <laughs> and then this is my political wall here. And this is uh, President Bush on his 80th birthday. And he called me up and says, uh, Chuck, I'm, I'm skydiving on my 80th birthday, and I want you to skydive with me. And I go, okay, well, you know, I, 
I have stuntmen that do that. <laughs> and, uh, it so looks anyway, like you did it. I thought I'm going to see if I can do it. So I went out and practiced a couple times. I said, Yeah, I can handle it. So anyway, we wound up jump. I wound up jumping with him and on that there. I'll tell you who I really admired, Ronald Reagan. He was really. He's he's a type of guy when you look at him, it's like nobody else is around. It's like you. It's just you and him when he looks at you. It was amazing. Do any Democrats like you or only Republicans? I don't know. You know, <laughs> the thing is with me, you know, I, I, adm I admire anyone's opinion. You know, if you have an opinion that's opposite of mine, that's fine. You know, I don't mind. But let's not take it personal. You know, that's what really bothers me when people get very hateful because I don't have the same opinion that they have. You know, let, let's, be, let's be human about this here and just say, okay, I agree to disagree. And, uh, and that's what we need to do in this world. You know, the, the hatefulness that's going on in our country has got to stop. It's, it's just not, it's not helpful for the future of our country. And it bothers me a lot.